Now you should see my screen only, I hope. Yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, Michael, uh, thank you very much for this nice and kind introduction. So my presentation is on industrial radiology or radiography with films. And if you apply, would like to apply digital, you need uh, some digitalization means of the films. And for this, uh, I found uh, is about 20 years ago, we developed an ISO standard. This is the ISO 14096. And I will just uh, speak a little bit more in detail compared with last year on the planned revision of the standards. And also, I would like to uh, show you some first ideas uh, or first uh, trials we did for the usage of new digitalization equipment in our lab. So I'm speaking to you as a convener of the ISO TC135 uh, subcommission five, which is the ISO I subcommission on radiographic testing in industry. Also not medical, but industrial testing. Yeah, and I'm a member of a series of other ASTM, CEN, Dean, and EEC committees all devoted to industrial radiology. Yeah, and I'm hosted by the Federal Institute for Materials Research here in Berlin, in Germany. And I'm uh, since uh, more than 30 years uh, scientific, a scientist here working in the field of NDT. When, when I came first time in connection with uh, NDT film digitalization, it was about uh, 25 years ago, so 1996, 97, uh, people connect, contacted me and uh, showed me their nice scanners they have developed for the medical field. They are fast, fast and good, and good. But, but if I tried to scan an uh, NDT film, the result was very poor. Uh, this is a nice uh, Weltman. You see here, this is a, a scanner we developed together with DuPont at this time in 1997, uh, a CCD line scanner. And this was a state of the art and not available before. And what is the problem? The technical problem is that since about 70 years, entity films are different from medical films. So they have different OD plots and they have different sensitivity. And as a result, the medical film is, yo, uh, is used in an optical density range between 0.1 and 3. Yeah. The optical film density is a measure for the blackness of the film. Yeah. If you have an optical density of 1, the film absorbs 90% uh, of the light and lets through only 10%. And if you have an optical density of 3, the film absorbs 99.9% .9 of the line, only 1% of the film goes through. But what is the advantage? The advantage is the image quality is increasing with optical density. So if you have a high optical density, you will have a high image quality. And therefore, the things is much more uh, pronounced in NDT, where you have optical densities which started for Weltman. There is a minimum optical density of two in the film, and it goes up to four to five. And therefore, the medical film scanner is optimized for a density range between 0 and 2, up to 3. And the result is for the dark entity film, a poor reading. And we have only a few gray values left. You see a lot of scanning noise. So therefore, this was the starting point to make a standard with the requirements for NDT film digitization. And this standard exists since uh, in Europe since 2003, and ISO took it over in 2005. And I reported last year already about this. In 2020, there was a new release, but this was just the merger of the text. We had no technical changes. But it's now about 25 years ago uh, after we started to develop the standard. And of course, there are some technical revisions necessary after 20 years. Huh? So we have some text errors and we have some uh, developments in the standard itself because when we started 20 years ago, there was no other uh, detector available in the standard world. There was only the film standardized. And uh, the film digitalization standard was the first standard which we developed 
to come from analog film to the digital world. Meanwhile, we have the computed radiography using imaging plates, you know, and we have also the uh, digital detector arrays, the DDAs, which uh, gives directly uh, electronic signal from the radiation beam. And for this, we developed in the last 20 years a series of standards. And during the development of standards, we developed also new uh, parameters. And now it becomes time to change uh, this uh, approach to introduce the new parameters also in the film digitization business. Huh? So for example, we have for film digitization, we defined 20 years ago, 25 years ago, the MPF at 20 person, but it comes out, the MPF at 10 person is more suitable for the other one. And we have a new, completely new parameter, which does not exist 20 years ago with the analog world, the basic spatial resolution, and so we had to introduce these uh, parameters also in the film digitization center. Uh, for film for scanner characterization, we have such a test film here, which we developed together uh, with the EPRI, this is the Electric Power Research Institute in the nuclear field in North Carolina in the US. This uh, went into an ACM standard in 1997 which was in 2015 reconfirmed, is still active. And nowadays uh, you can purchase this uh, test film here in full size, 17 by 14 inches. This is a maximum film size normally as a adjunct RRE 1936, which is the standard number from ACM from the American Standards Organization. Okay, and so uh, we will do some principal changes in the standards. And the procedure is, of course, uh, you have at least once a year an ISO meeting in the, in the working group. And the last uh, ISO meeting in my subcommission five was in October last year, 14th. And I have here is just an excerpt of the uh, items from the minutes. And you see, we have a series of standards which has to be upgraded and here you, in red, I marked the decision that we will also upgrade now after 20 years, the film digitization standards 14096 in two parts. Yeah. And here you still see there are still some EN numbers, which are the last in, in the uh, radiographic world, in NDT at least, uh, which are not yet transformed to ISO. And we have already for the last, we have already obtained an ISO number and for the other we will go. So we, we meanwhile, <laughs> in the 1990s, we developed a series of European standards, merging the standards basically from France, UK and Germany. And these are now after another 20 years moved to ISO. And this is a, this is a normal procedure, uh, which is handled by the uh, subcommissions. And so we have until the end of the year, we have time uh, to uh, develop a new draft for revision for the film digitization standards. So, and if you look, what is what are the basic requirements which are defined in these 14096 standard? There's a part one which gives some measurement procedures, but the real requirements are given in part two and basically are summarized in two tables, table one and table two. And the address is table one is still okay. What it uh, basically fixes is that you have three digitization classes. Typically in non-destructive testing, we have a testing class A, which is a basic testing. And we have a testing class B, which is an enhanced testing class uh, for enhanced testing, enhanced selectivity. But for film digitization, we added or 25 years ago, we added a class DS, which stands for digital storage, because this means that you read out all the information the film uh, can uh, store. And one of the information is the uh, density, it's the resolution of the density. And we, we have here a limit for the density resolution of the uh, digitization equipment, which is 0.02 here. And this is very nicely synchronized with the uh, minimum film noise you can find in NDT films and also in the 
sensitivity of the human eye when uh, the human eye looks at the film. So the limit is, uh, this is very well uh, uh, ensured in the last uh, yeah, 30, 50 years even, uh, that this is the limit of the naked eye. And so we will uh, preserve this limit of the naked eye, of course, in the, in the digital data. So this is, uh, these are the density rest requirements. And then you have for the simple things, 0.5 to 3.5 optical densities and four and 4.5. So you have um, for the dynamic, for the digital storage class, you came up with a much wider dynamic range. But you had to consider all in this full dynamic range. You had to fulfill this fine uh, density contrast sensitivity. Huh? So this is very well approved. Uh, meanwhile, and there is no need to change anything in Table One as, uh, after 25 years. But Table Two comes out has a problem. Because we have here the spatial resolution, minimum spatial resolution. Okay, it's very easy that you can define a pixel size. But the pixel size itself is not everything for spatial resolution. Uh, of course, you cannot have a better spatial resolution as the size of your pixel. But if you have a poor system with a cheap optics, then you can reach a very, very fine pixel size, but you have not the required unsharpness. So the unsharpness can be much higher from the pixel bias. And therefore, we had in, the, in this part from 2005, a requirement on an MPF modulation transfer function in line curves per millimeter. And this does not really uh, correspond to the pixel size. And we had in the past always uh, the problem that there are scanners, they fulfill, for example, the MTF uh, requirement, but does not fulfill the pixel size, or vice versa. The scanner, this is a more uh, typical change, it can provide 30 micrometer pixel size, but the MPF at 20% uh, is not reached at uh, with eight line pearls per millimeter or five line pearls per millimeter only because the optics are too poor uh, to, to, to save some money. And so is these are some, uh, and if you have fulfilled only one line, what should you do? Should you uh, uh, concentrate on this line, on MTF, or only on pixel size? So there were some ambiguities in this uh, in this uh, selection, and therefore I see here a need really for uh, improvement. Yeah, and the inherent film unsharpness limits the required scanning resolution. This is the basics behind this table. And here I, I measured the film unsharpness on an edge. Yeah, this was developed by Classens in Philips Research Laboratories in 1940, yeah, 1945. He published a paper on this, and we measured this for NDT films. And if you look, these unsharpness values is just the half the value of the pixel size. So our measurements correspond very well with the pixel size, but we found the pixel size itself is not everything. And therefore, I have here a new version of this table too, the revised table, and uh, we delete the pixel size and replace the pixel size by the basic spatial resolution. Uh, this is a basic spatial resolution is a parameter which we use in all the other digital techniques at the DDA and with the uh, uh, computed radiography with imaging plates. And uh, uh, several standards now, meanwhile, using this term here. And what I did, I did a very simple approach. And because the basic spatial resolution, uh, it will come later how it is measured and defined, but this you can consider as an effective pixel size. And I defined, uh, I used my old table from before, and I defined the basic spatial resolution as four thirds of the pixel size. Huh? And now we go back. For example, here the old pixel size is 15, and we uh, divide by three and multiply by four, and we end up with 20. Mm -hmm. So we have some some light. Yeah, and these are the some rounding. This will give the new values, but we still have a second line here, and this second uh, column is called duplex wire number. And there is also a standard because the duplex wire is in use since 1917. It was a uh, yeah, it was a development from the CERN, from the Central Electric Research Laboratory in London, in UK. 
and they uh, developed this and it was investigated in the International Institute of Welding uh, if this is a good means to measure the unsharpness in the film. It is a good mean, but uh, it was never, uh, it went never into the standards for real applications. It went into the application when the digital technique comes up. The, the imaging plate uh, use uh, the uh, duplex wire and the DDA, they all use duplex wires. And therefore, the change of the table here for film digitization to the new parameters is just an adaption of the old values to the new world of uh, terms. And what is, for example, such uh, basic spatial resolution value here. You see, you have the image quality uh, parameter. Huh? You have three, you have contrast, you have basic spatial resolution, and you have dynamic range. And the basic spatial resolution is nowadays measured by uh, duplex wire. And here you see an image in the blue here. This is a piece of plastics of a size 70 by 15 millimeter. And it has here platinum wires inside of different diameters and different distances. The distance is identical to the diameter. And if you make now a radiographic image of such an IQI, this is shown here in the top in uh, grayscale, then you see here the two, uh, the, the two uh, duplex wires and the gap in between. And if you draw a profile across the duplex wire, then you will see that you have here two wires for the high resolution as the highest, uh, the largest, the thickest wires here have a diameter and a distance of 0.8 millimeter. Uh, so for a typical NDT system, it's not a problem to resolve this. And the resolution is then uh, given by a dip, which is the ratio um, of the uh, here of, of the wire contrast to this dip, which you have in the middle. Uh. So this uh, dip is always below 100 persons. Uh, only if the wires are very far from each other, then you reach the 100 person. Uh. But if the wires become smaller and nearer and nearer, then you see the dip will be, uh, yeah, the dip here, this contrast will be lower and lower and lower and lower. And then you will even have uh, wires here and the fine wires you cannot resolve because your pixel size is now too large to separate the wires. Huh? And so you get here, basically for each of the systems you measure, you get a region where you have a green indication, where you have a, uh, a dip above 20% and then you have a red indication range where the dip is below 20%. And this is for what we are looking for. And then you have another region where you cannot resolve any dip. Huh? And so the limiting resolution is this where the first, uh, the, the largest dip is smaller than 20%. Yeah. So, and this you can read. And here, uh, this is used now since oh, the first uh, standard on computed radiography with imaging plates in NDT were developed also I think around 2005. And since this time we use this duplex wires, this is also now 20 years. And it becomes time to introduce this also in the film digitization business, huh? because it's easy. Uh, the definition is given here. The definition is uh, of the basic spatial resolution is just the half of the value of the unsharpness. And then you can think about, uh, because the unsharpness is defined by two pixels, that this is the effective pixel size. Huh? And it's also very well real, uh, very well confirmed, meanwhile, that an MTF of an edge at 10% will give the readings of this SRD value. Huh? So everything fits uh, perfect. If you go away from the MTF 20% we have in the old, uh, in the existing uh, film dissertation standard, and you go to 10% and you use the uh, basic spatial resolution as new parameter. Everything will fit. So this is the basic like, idea what to do. And you see, for example, here for more explanation, there is an ISO standard for a digital testing of belts using ZIA or DDAs. And then you have two tables, one for class B enhanced technique, one for class A standard technique, and then you have, depending on the wall thickness range here, where you can select or have to select all the energy, uh, these uh, requirements with the sharpness. Huh? And you see 
for the uh, higher inspection quality, you ha had to use a higher sharpness. You have basically a slightly different uh, water thickness ranges, but this higher some partitions. So you see here D74, you have uh, up to three wires more, double duplex wires to resolve more than with the uh, testing class A. Right? Therefore, enhanced and basic. And we have our uh, testing class DS for uh, uh, digital storage, which is even much higher. Right? And you see here, this is a difference between D and, uh, A and B. Uh, this is at least basically here, it looks even like one duplex wire, but you have a nice jump to the uh, storage class because the internal unsharpness of the film is much higher. It was never considered in standardization for films because the unsharpness with the film radiography, industrial film radiography, is always controlled by the focus spot size of your X-ray source and the distance. Uh, and if you make a a longer distance of your focal uh, of your X-ray tube, you get a lower geometric distance, a lower geometric unsharpness, and therefore you have better results. So these are the, the analog to the digital standards, and we have will have now somewhere in the future a similar table with requirements in the film digitalization standard. Yeah. I, last year I reported already about some equipment at BAM. And uh, we have basically, you can have uh, for film digitalization, you can have three different uh, modes. You can use point scanning, line scanning, or area scanning. Now, these are for my lecture notes, which we give for level three, the schemes, the schemes. And we have in our uh, lab since uh, 2003, such laser uh, scanners up to uh, 50 micrometer uh, pixel size. Huh? And uh, then there, is a nice, still a nice drum scanner, but the production stopped in 2000. Nobody nowadays is able to <laughs> get any drum scanner. It's very slow, but the quality is good. But uh, this is, was developed for pre-press, but nobody in pre-press uses film anymore. It's completely reversed. But the scanners are from a German company are rigid, and my scanner is now also more than 20 years running. But this is not the state of art uh, altogether. And the state of the art we investigated recently, because what we found was also from the, my first experience in 1997, that all the tested CCD line scanners, and you have, you scan with the CCD line one line, and then you move the film under the scanning line uh, and collect so the area. They all have a time problem if you go for NDT films. And also the uh, so certificate what we released last year for Microtech, they scanned, uh, several minutes to acquire a film. And this I do not really consider as practical. So the task was, and this we investigated last year, to investigate the limits of high-res, high-speed, and HDR film digitization using modern 2D array chips. Now, there's uh, basically only one manufacturer, Sony, which is available to deliver such uh, CMOS sensors and so he delivers this to Nikon and to Canon and to everybody. You can also purchase this uh, in the normal standard market. They give you more than 60 megapixels and give a 16 bit monochrome output. Uh, and now let's see. Uh, this is the first lab version we have by, in our lab. And uh, here you see some first results. The nice thing is. Ah, this is a German diagram. Sorry, I had only the German version. So the nice thing is that the all, all together complete scanning time were well, only 20 seconds. So we used 27 micrometer pixel, uh, pixel size and we got 30 micrometer basic spatial resolution with a 60 megapixel camera. So we were able to uh, use an HDR image acquisition and a high bit depth. And with this, we are able to acquire the complete range from optical density zero up to five and higher. Now you see here, this is a measured DCS values and they of course will increase with the optical density because light becomes less and less, but optical density means a light absorption uh, 10 to the power of five. 100,000 uh, times light is absorbed by the film, but the, the camera is still detecting it. Okay, this is just, <laughs> this is not the complete true. 
what you need is a perfect light shielding of your equipment or a complete dark room. This is very easy in the lab environment. You use a complete dark room and you have no stray light and this did it. And uh, in a complete dark room and a complete light shielded environment, you can reach such wide, wide dynamic range, no problem. Yeah. And what is now finally, what's the time? Oh, I put in time. What is the uh, summary of my presentation here? Uh, we are providing still for the industry reference procedures. So one very old one is the NDT film characterization of the film itself, but we meanwhile characterize all other detectors too, CR plates, DDAs, and also film digitalization equipment. Uh, and we measure the optical density of film. We have reference equipment for the visual diffuse uh, optical density of film, and we distribute also reference materials the BAM X001 is some, I think this is a BAM X001 reference material, which is a film where we exposed 15 different steps in calibrated optical densities. And then uh, you can use it for calibration of your scanner and of your equipment with what you are using. And uh, yeah, this is basically our BAM production model. First, we do some pre-normative uh, research uh, like we did for film scanning in, nine, in the <laughs> 25 years ago. And we had support by industry, like you have seen from DuPont, we get uh, funds and, and, and equipment. Also European Union give uh, uh, projects, research projects and so. And then after the research, we develop typically standards together with the standardization organizations. Yeah, and finally, we can do testing and certification. Huh? Yeah, and standardization is going in different ways. So it looks like for me that all the activities from Sen are meanwhile integrated into ISO and ASTM, they <laughs> are doing something different in first glance, but in the second uh, view, because the peoples are the same in both the Kremia here, then you will find that even these are two different organizations, say, uh, doing nearly similar, very identical standards. Huh? Because ASTM is much faster moving than ISO, so everything new digital starts at ASTM and is later moved to ISO. No? Even now with additive manufacturing, uh, we have the case that the first time we have a joint working group between ASTM and ISO, and they are working together. Okay, so this is a globalized view. And okay, our task is of course, we should support German industry. And so, uh, yeah, because we are belonging to the German Ministry of Economics, and therefore I'm spending time uh, for such things like standardization and explaining the standards here. And we are doing, this is not my only task, we are doing this since more than 80 years. First time, which was the first standard, which was released by the Reichs Röntgenstelle in 1935, defines this type of Dean wires. And nowadays the term Dean wire went around the world because it's a typical tool to measure the image quality. Yeah. And so we will actively support the emergent products on NDT film digitization. And we are looking for safe applications by research, testing, and standardization. OK. And then I'm today at the end of my presentation. I thank you very much for your attention and are open for questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Chappell. Um, we already asked uh, the audience to um, provide some questions. I have here the first question for you. Um, James Molinaro uh, is asking, what is the average spatial resolution of class one films? Yeah, there is a typical misconception. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the misconception is that a different film, we, we have uh, six film system class. Huh? And this film system class gives the speed. Class one film, is the slowest film, and class six film is the fastest film speed. But the film speed has nothing to do with the uh, inherent film unsharpness. The inherent film unsharpness comes from an effect This is also not very well known. And we, <laughs> I wrote three years ago, I wrote a book chapter explaining this. 
it's now uh, on a, a relative expensive book available. The question is, the NDT films are exposed by electrons. And this is totally different to the medical film because the medical film is used in combination with a scintillator and exposed by optical light. And so the, and the result you see here in our measurements, these are from the 90s, is the unsharpness. And you see here the energy. And if you change, this is the X-ray energy. If you change the X-ray energy, you will change not only the energy, but you also change the, the metal screen, which we are using in NDT to enhance the film speed. And so you, need, uh, you use nearly no metal screen at the low energy, and then you have an inner unsharpness of 30 micrometer or less. But if you go to high energy, you add 30 micrometer of lead, a screen. Huh? So this is a typical thing. If you purchase a film, the film is vacuum packed, and the film has uh, two LED screens on the back and front of the film, because the film itself is two-sided to save exposure time, you have two emulsions. Huh? And then you have an inner, un inner unsharpness of 60 micrometer, because this is a, it's a typical wavelengths, uh, yeah, free wavelengths of the electrons in your film layer. Uh, and so it, it does not depend on the film system class, it's only a speed question. The, the unsharpness depends on the energy. And you see, if you go to higher energy, here you have then 400 micrometers, 600, 800 micrometers with cobalt, for example, at one MeV. The problem is there, you use typically half a millimeter or one millimeter star screen. And this thick star screen determines then your inner inherent film unsharpness. Hmm. So this is a uh, but this is another story. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing this. I hope this question was answered. Um, since uh, on time schedule, um, we, um, I'm sure also when these uh, presentations go on YouTube, you always can connect with one of, of us. If you have additional questions, we always can connect you uh, via LinkedIn to the yeah. presenters um, if, if requested. Hey, Dr. Chapel, thank you very much for joining us this year again. Okay. Really appreciate it. And yeah. we, um, we are now going to switch over